arrived and so have the cars. Here we see the Lancia team warming up their engines. Mechanics checking and double checking to make sure that everything is ready. Mercedes-Benz have three cars here to be driven by Yuan Fangio, Sterling Moss and Hans Hermann. This is the Mercedes race car transporter capable of carrying a racing car at 105 miles an hour. And here is the spare car of the team being unloaded. And there's a bonnet full of Mercedes engine. Cockpit views of the three short wheelbase cars built specially for this race shows off their speedy lines. Maserati team cars are to be driven by Jean Perra, seen here, Musso, Mieres and Perdisa. Scuderia Ferrari have four cars, two of them the new Super Squalo type, to be driven by Farina, Trantignon, Shell and Taruffi. Here we see one of the Maserati mechanics changing the sparking plugs on one of the team cars. Sterling Moss jokes with his bearded journalist friend Dennis Jenkinson. Herr Alfred Neubauer is Mercedes team chief and as usual appears to have everything nicely under control. Hopes run high in the Lancia camp. Four of the new Grand Prix cars are entered to be driven by Ascari, Villarese, Castellotti and Chiron. At last everything is ready and the cars are lined up and ready to start practicing. A large, well-informed and enthusiastic crowd has collected and the pits grandstand is full. The course is now open to the drivers and the departure of the first car is eagerly awaited. Fangio has arrived at the pits and gets ready to start work. First car away is Jean Beras Maserati. He is followed by the three works Mercedes of Moss, Herman and Fangio. And this is Musso's Maserati. the Mercedes designer is testing the spare car. Castellotti is out practicing in his Lancia. Alberto Ascari rounds the gasworks hairpin. Farina is trying out one of the new Ferraris. Herman is going extremely well. Here we see Herman rounding Harbour Bend. It is a great pity that Herman later crashed and became a non-starter for the race. Herr Neubauer waves out Sterling Moss who is going out to do some further practice in his Mercedes number six. And here's the van wall from Great Britain to be driven by Mike Hawthorne. Mike is pushed off to start his practice.
Fangio climbs into his Mercedes once more. So far, Fangio is fastest of all. His time of 1 minute 41.1 seconds has shattered the 18-year-old lap record. Sterling Moss receives instructions from Herr Neubauer. Sterling is third fastest, with a lap of 1 minute 41.2 seconds. But this has been achieved whilst he was driving Fangio's car, which appears to hold the road much better than his own. And here we see Sterling sliding through the chicane, using much more of the available road than any other competitor. Sterling has now finished his run and cuts his engine and coasts into the pits once more. Here's Castellotti's Lancia. And this is Villarese's Lancia. Ascari is still going round and he's trying very hard to get down to Fangio's time. Eventually, he manages to equal 141.1. But Fangio is supreme. At last, it's race day. A day of brilliant sunshine. And from our position on the Monaco hillside, we look down on the busy starting area. And here is Prince Ranier, setting out in his Lancia sports car to declare the circuit officially open. Mercedes are being pushed into their positions by hordes of mechanics. On the front row of the grid, we have the two Mercedes of Fangio and Moss, and sandwiched between them, Ascari's Lancia. On the second row, we have Castellotti's Lancia and Beira's Maserati. Now all cars have their engines running. The starting flag is raised, and the race is due to start at any moment. They're away, the race has started. The two silver Mercedes desperately try to out-accelerate Ascari's Lancia. And they manage it. Fangio and Moss round the hairpin neck and neck, followed by Ascari and Castellotti. Cars are shunted round here, and many receive dented noses and tails. the hill towards the casino, it's Fangio, Moss, Castellotti, Ascari and Beira. Down to the station hairpin, it's the same order. The cars round this corner all nose to tail. It's Fangio, followed by Castellotti and Moss. The car sweeps through the chicane and approach Harbour Bend, and Castellotti closes on Fangio during the braking. And now Moss comes into the picture. But Fangio stays in the lead. is still in the lead. Castellotti is lying second. Moss is trying desperately to pass. Ascari is fourth and Beira is fifth. For still leads as the cars round Gasworks hairpin. Castellotti is still lying second. Moss third and Ascari fourth. Fangio sweeps through the chicane. 
building up a lead which was to become a commanding one during the early part of the race. Moss passes Castellotti's Lancier on the braking. He just manages to squeeze through before Harbour Bend. Fangio still leads at the station. Castellotti has regained second place from Moss. Bayera is closing up on the leaders. The rest of the cars are now stringing out behind. Mike Hawthorne is still going well in the van wall. Sterling Moss is back in second place and is being closely followed by Castellotti's Lancia. And again, Castellotti has passed Moss into second place. Behind the leaders, many dogfights are staged. Hawthorne's Van Wall is here challenging Shell's Ferrari. Louis Rosier's Maserati has hit the wall somewhere, and the tail is practically torn off. Hawthorne manages to pass Shell, and the Ferrari driver immediately tries to retake the van wall on the inside coming out of the corner. Fangio is now well away into the lead. Moss has regained second place and looks as if he has every intention of keeping it this time. Ascari is now lying third, Castellotti fourth and Beira fifth. Now a tremendous dogfight commences between these three cars. Fangio round station hairpin. Moss is following the usual Mercedes tactics of closing up on the leader and turns in a lap of 1 minute 42.6 seconds. Castellotti has regained third place. Ascari and Beira are close behind. Andre Simon, driving the third works Mercedes, is dropping back. The Mercedes isn't going at all well. Simon coasts into the pits to retire. So does the van wall. Station hairpin once more. And now the two Mercedes are beginning to lap the tail end of the field. Fangio is still leading Moss. And the two Mercedes have a colossal lead over the next three cars. Castellotti, Beira, and Ascari. are shooting away from the railway arches onto the sea front. A tremendous battle is still going on between the two Lanciers and Beira's Maserati. Here the two leaders are lapping Villarese's Lancia. Polly's Gordini spins and hits the wall. He is narrowly avoided by other cars. He turns round when the road is clear and accelerates away into the race once more. Fangio is still safely in the lead as the race approaches the halfway mark. The two Mercedes have closed right up now and proceed to give a fine demonstration of team driving. Moss not attempting to overtake Fangio. Here, 
we see the two rounding the gasworks hairpin nose to tail. And here they are trying to lap Padisa's Maserati, but the Italian driver won't give way, and it's some time before Fangio gets by. Jean Bearer pulls into the pits with engine trouble on lap 42. Now Sterling Moss is trying to pass Padisa, but although he manages to draw alongside, he cannot squeeze by because Padisa just won't give way. Sterling finally gets by, and watch now as he rounds the hairpin, he points to his mirror to tell the young Italian to keep an eye on those behind. Ascari is now safely in third place. Castellotti has hit the curb somewhere and damaged a wheel, having to call at the pits to change it. But now on lap 50, Moss comes round alone. Where is Fangio? Moss signals to his pit that Fangio has stopped back in the town. Now Moss has the lead with 50 laps more to go. well ahead of Ascari who is lying second with Trantignon's Ferrari lying third Villa raises Lancia skids wildly outside the Hotel de Paris but he manages to sort things out and continue Bera has changed cars with Padisa and is now driving number 40 Moss has an unapproachable lead over Ascari and is still pulling away. Farina's Ferrari is lying eighth. Sterling cannot be challenged now and given a trouble free run he is certain to win this race. Ascari is driving desperately to try and avoid being lapped by Moss, but he just can't get any more speed out of the car. Apparently the brakes are failing. Moss rounds the gasworks hairpin in impeccable style and accelerates away the other side, losing no time at all. The cars are seen here, rounding that tricky corner at the bottom of the hill and accelerating away to something in the region of 100 miles an hour. Ascari pulls out and tries to pass Padisa, but unfortunately he just hasn't got the power. At 80 laps, Moss appears to have the race in his pocket. Freya, driving Tarufi's Ferrari, spins on some spilt oil at the hairpin, and the other cars slow down and adopt a different line of entry into this corner. Here, Moss leads Farina. On the seafront, he has two Maseratis close behind. But what's this? Sterling Moss is slowing up. Smoke is pouring out of the car. He pulls straight into the pits. Mechanics jump over the pit counter and tear off the bonnet as Moss climbs out. But unfortunately, nothing can be done and the car is retired. This means that Ascari will be in the lead when he comes round next time. But tremendous excitement! Ascari has overshot the chicane. The car has somersaulted straight into the harbour. Frogman standing by dive in to rescue Ascari. But his blue helmet pops up over to the left of the point where the car went in. And he starts to swim towards one of the yachts. The car has disappeared completely. A motor launch has picked Ascari up, and he is brought over to the harbour side, where an ambulance is waiting. He is transferred to a stretcher, and taken to hospital with little worse than a cut nose and a severe shaking. This changes the whole aspect of the race, and now, number 44, the Ferrari driven by Maurice Trentignon, comes up into the lead.
This is most unexpected. Unfortunately, Bayra can't get any more speed out of Padisa's car than he could out of his own. This is the point where Ascari overslid the chicane. Bayra spins round and retires with clutch trouble. Moss waits for the finish of the race before pushing his crippled Mercedes over the line to be classed as a finisher. The end of the race is now near. The cars are being signalled that there's one lap to go. And there goes the chequered flag. Maurice Trantignon has won the 1955 Grand Prix de Europe for Ferrari. A magnificent victory. Castellotti is second and Perdisa is third. The crowds gather round the spot where Gari went into the harbour. Frogmen are down below trying to salvage the car. This has been a race of fluctuating fortunes, and this film is dedicated to the undying memory of one of its most brilliant competitors, Alberto Ascari, who was so tragically killed three days later at Monza.